I never know what to do with my hands. Hi, welcome to Daddy Curb's Farm. I have some interesting projects going on. They're not ones that I really wanted to do, but because of some of my trees acting up, they're projects that needed done. So I have two trees on my property that decided that they were going to split right at the main trunk. And they just happened to be two trees that I wanted to keep. This here is a big cedar elm right next to the house and it shades the house for a good portion of the day so I really like to keep this big tree. But right here at this where these two branches split off it was splitting right down the trunk. So I needed to come up with a solution. So this one's already done. I can't show you how I did this but lucky for you I have two trees splitting so we're going I'm going to show you this tree and then we're going to go over to the other tree and try to do a step-by-step -step on how I solved this challenge or at least I hope I solved it time will tell so if you look up here you can see high up on those branches I have a cable pulling them together the the steps to the process were to lighten the branches by cutting some of the excess branches off and then to use a come along with some straps to pull the branches back together put some bolts through there high up and then cable them together so that's the main idea let's go out to the other tree and see if I can show you how to do it so here we are up near the orchard and I have a small group of trees just by my gate on the west side of the orchard in the evening these trees give a little bit of shade to the orchard and uh, this tree in my opinion is just attractive I like having it here it's one of the larger trees up in this area so but I have the same problem here it was splitting right down the middle now I, I told you I was going to do a step by step uh, we're not going to do every step on video because I needed to get this tree secured uh, so I already have the strap in the tree and I just I climbed up there put those heavy-duty straps around the branches hooked on the come along and pulled it together there was too much pressure I felt like I was gonna lose this tree if I didn't get that part done and I didn't have time to get that on video so I'm gonna explain the steps that that I'm gonna go through here and uh, and then show you a little bit on each step so first of all I'm gonna take some of this weight especially this heavy branch here I'm gonna take that off that way uh, it'll open up the sun to my orchard just a little bit and also lighten this branch considerably over here I don't have a whole lot to remove so I might take a few small branches off but mostly the weight that I'm going to be relieving is on this side after that I'm going to be drilling through directly under these straps I'm going to be drilling through the branch putting my eye bolts with metal plates to act as washers and then cabling them together and there's a few tricks in there that I learned on the other tree that I'll be happy to share with you on this tree and here's the pile of branches that I took out of the tree and uh, I'll give you a shot of what that looks like now with the, the, that branch being a little lighter and we'll move on to the next step this is the cable that we're going to be using to strap the tree together with it's the same cable I used over there uh, I thought that I was doing a good thing by buying the, the heavy cable with the plastic sheathing because I thought it would have some weather resistance and, and uh, just be kind of a higher grade cable for this job but some of the lessons learned yesterday it took some time and it was a few scary moments was that when that when that tree gets under pressure and it's got those buckles on there that sheathing the buckles are grabbing that sheathing and it just strips it right off and twice we had that job completely done and the tree got under pressure and it pulled that sheathing off and that tree kind of snap crackle popped and pulled apart again and that was a little bit scary so even though I paid a little extra for this you can't return it after it's been cut so 
I'm going to lose that extra 10 cents a foot or whatever I paid and I'm going to strip that sheathing right off. Now the way I'm going to strip that off is I have this utility knife and I'm just going to pull that blade out just a little bit because if I slip I don't want to cut my whole hand off. I'm trying to be as safe as I can here but uh, sometimes things happen so I'm just going to run this blade right down that cable. I'm going to have to go the whole length, and it's about 10 feet, but just for demonstration, let me show you what I'm doing. Once I get it cut right down the middle of the cable, then I just pull that off. Now this is a pretty weather resistant cable in the first place, so it's not absolutely necessary that that plastic is on there. I just thought I was doing a good thing, but you know, we learn. Hmm. Now that the tree is lighter, we took some of that pressure off, some of the extra weight off. I need to get a hole through here. See, I need a hole through this tree that is about the same angle as this brace because the, the brace that's going on there with the cable is going to be replacing this. So it has to be about the same. So I'm going to use this large drill bit and try to get a hole straight through the center of this branch. All right, so we are through the tree and now I need to put my eye bolt on there. Now these plates right here are thick steel. These came off of an old pallet that I took apart, but I thought they would be perfect to help distribute some of the weight, some of the pressure that I'm putting on these branches. So I'm using them like big washers. I'm going to put another steel plate on the outside. Oh. Bummer. My eyeball is too long. So here we are a week later from the last clip. Uh, what happened in the tree was that I, I got positioned and, and I drilled the hole through the branch and I discovered that the eye bolt that I was using was too long. In the other tree that I did, that was like my practice tree, uh, those longer eye bolts were perfect, but the branches on this tree are a little bit smaller. So I had to go back to the hardware store and get some new eye bolts, but the problem was they were closed because it was Sunday. So here we are on the next Saturday, six days later, and I finally had time to go to the hardware store and get those exchanged, and we're ready to go. So I got all of my stuff laid out on the uh, tailgate of my awesome old pickup truck here, and we're going to lay this out. I'm going to show you how I'm going to assemble the cables right here before we get back in the tree, and then we'll get things going. First of all, we got to get this cable cut in half uh, because, you know, I have on two sides of the turnbuckle. So this is the turnbuckle here and I'm going to have a cable going from this side to a branch and this side to a branch and this allows me to tighten it up. So I need to get the length of cable that I have cut into two parts and they may be a little long at first, that's okay, but I'm just going to take it and fold it in half. Come up here to the fold, the halfway mark, and get my bolt cutters. You see that? Yeah. And snap that off. It's a pretty thick cable. My bolt cutters are a little bit old and wore out, and it's got some notches, so it's. There we go. Now we got two halves to the cable. Two equal length cables that we're going to put on this turnbuckle. Okay. By the way, in the back of my truck, these barrels, I picked those up this morning at a, a yard sale for five dollars a piece. I wasn't planning on going to a yard sale, but my wife was out and she was looking for clothes and decorations and knickknacks and whatever else she looks for. Uh, she usually finds some really good deals and she said, Honey, we got these barrels out here, big blue barrels, like like a couple that I've had, that I have in the in the goat run. 
I pay $15 a piece for the other ones. And she said, these are $5. And they're, they're actually from uh, Dr. Pepper. So they've had syrup in them. So it's, uh, it's food safe. It's good. So I'm going to be using those for rainwater collection or, I don't know, the uh, uh, animal watering systems or something. Okay, so on these turnbuckles here, or the cables that's going to go onto the turnbuckles, you know, first, I'm going to put them on these first, on the eye bolts. So we're going to thread it through, fold it over, and we have these little saddle clamps. And they have just uh, like a little U-bolt and a little saddle that goes on there and two little bolts, or two little nuts, I'm sorry. Now let me show you. You have a tag end that, that's your short end and then like your main cable. The U will go over the main cable and the saddle that goes over it like this. The saddle will go onto the side where your, the tag end comes off. And the reason for that is that the, the saddle has some grooves. It's like texture to help hold on, hold on to that tag end. Otherwise, you stand a chance of it uh, slipping off. You know what? I almost forgot something too. This is called a rope thimble, and the rope thimble. snaps onto the eye bolt not easily all the time that way your your cable will go around that thimble and you stand a better chance of that cable not crimping over and coming apart or breaking or whatever so then your clamp goes on there your saddle goes on there And then your the the nuts that go onto the U bolt or U yeah the U bolt. And I'm gonna be using a impact, an electric or a, a battery powered impact. I'll give you a better look at this in a minute. I'm going to slide that that buckle or that bolt clamp right up next to the thimble. And the impact gives a nice tight ratchet down on that. Now let me show you what that looks like. So we have the eye bolt, the cable wrapped around the thimble, and then the, the U-bolt with saddle. And notice the saddle is on the side that has the short, the tag end of the cable. Now we're going to put two of these just to add extra tension onto that to make sure it never comes apart. Whatever I can do sitting here on the ground is better than me doing it in the tree. Just makes it a little safer. All right, I'm gonna ratchet this one down. There we go, that's one side done. To spare you some uh, tedious boredom, I went ahead and built the second one off camera. So I have two of these ready. Now I need to just get the uh, turnbuckle 
ready to go. I can't actually assemble this down here completely because I need to make sure that the, the measurements are correct when I get in the tree. But on the turnbuckle, just to make things a little easier for me, I can go ahead and snap my um, rope thimbles on the ends. Let's get in the tree. Okay, so we're up in the tree on this branch that I drilled out last week. I have the cable that I just built and my large plates here. I'm going to put through one. Tap this through. And I'm laying that, that washer kind of up against the branch and this side. going to go up the branch or against the branch on that side. Now I got a nut to put on the end there. Okay then a large wrench. Let me try to do this without falling off the ladder. Perfect. Now that gives me one side of the cable to hold that branch up. All right, we're going to attach that first cable now to one end of the turnbuckle. And that just has to be somewhere here in the middle. The other cable will the other cable will attach to the other side. So right about here. I have my two U-bolt buckles. It will actually be easier if I slide these onto the cable. Don't take the nuts all the way off. Slide them onto the cable first and then put my turnbuckle on, wrap it around the thimble like so. and slide it over that tag in. Okay, now that first one gets put right up next to that, that thimble to hold it down tight. And I'll slide the other one up just a little bit, keeping that saddle over that Tag in. All right, so our turnbuckle is attached. I got to get over here and drill a hole for the other side, and then we'll attach the attach the other cable to this side. There we go, we made it through. Now these drill bits, I bought a new bit for both trees. I mean, it's the same bit for two, tree, two trees. And I've had to sharpen the bit every time I go through a branch because this new wood, especially mesquite, is really, really hard and it doesn't last long. Okay, so same thing on this side as we did on the other. We have our metal plate, our bolt, through here. Thread that on there. Yes, Luke, the branches that you're cutting are for the goats. I got Luke down on the ground trimming up some of these branches that I fell. We throw it into the goat run and they'll eat all the leaves off of it.
All right, so we got our second cable on and I need to put, I need to get it bent over this thimble. Over here. Now we're gonna get it hand tight and then uh, we'll tighten that, that turnbuckle up. So I need And just kind of hand tighten this turnbuckle. See how close we can get. A little inconvenient that I have the turnbuckle directly under the come along. All right, I got the turnbuckle kind of hand tight but we need to put a little extra tension on it so I can back this come along off. And I need to hold this eye bolt, or this end of the turnbuckle, I need to hold it still. So what I'm gonna do is take the, the long drill bit, I'm gonna rest that on my shoulder, and I'm gonna hold this side with my hand. I'm sorry, my armpit, because it's going the other way. And then I'm just gonna use, so I'm holding this one, I got this one wedged, and I'm using this wrench to turn this turnbuckle. And I just need to put enough tension on it that when I turn, when I back this come along off, that the, the tree's not going to relax too much. It needs to stay under the same tension. Okay, I can feel that uh, come along relaxing just a little bit so hopefully that's enough tension okay just to be safe I'm gonna hit these again with the uh, impact I got that all under tension I feel like that's enough tension this is loosened up a little bit and now I can back this come along off Okay, the come along is now off and the tree appears to be holding under the pressure of just that cable. There's one last thing that I want to do to make sure that these things stay in place and that's to put a lag bolt in the ends of those heavy plates. So I'm going to use the drill, start a little pilot hole and I'm going to put a lag bolt using the impact. And I'm not really concerned about going all the way in. I just need it so that that doesn't turn. There we are, that's a repaired tree. You know, this tree didn't need to be saved. I could have cut it down, I have plenty of trees. But on my farm, uh, there are certain trees that I just like the shape of, I like their size and the placement. And I felt like it was worth giving this tree uh, some repair to give it a little extra time you know hopefully this repair will give it many more years of just providing shade shelter and um, just being a, a, an important part of this ecosystem financially it would have been cheaper to cut the tree down it cost me about hundred and twenty five dollars between both trees for all of the hardware and probably five or six hours of my time but I feel like it was worth it it was worth a shot I saved two big trees on my property for that time and that money. So I feel pretty good about that. So thank you for joining me on the Daddy Curbs Farm. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this time. I'll talk to you soon.